Is Tears of the Kingdom the end of the long debated and complicated Legend of Zelda timeline? Well, yes and no. The answer is naturally slightly more complicated than you'd think. Howdy folks, my name is Speaker4, and just so we're all on the same page, let's go over a brief timeline of the Zelda universe before we get to the theories about Tears of the Kingdom. In the beginning, before time began, the three golden goddesses descended into the chaos that was Hyrule. Din, the goddess of power, created the earth, Nehru, the goddess of wisdom, enforced order upon the world, and Furor, the goddess of courage, created life. With their job complete, the goddesses left, and left behind the Triforce, a all-powerful artifact which would grant its holder their heart's desire. The goddesses entrusted the Triforce to the goddess Hylia, who fought against the demon king Demise and sent the surviving humans into the sky on an island that would become Skyloft, on which she hid the Triforce. After sealing Demise, Hylia renounced her divinity and transferred her soul to the body of a mortal who would come of age when Demise returned. She also created the Goddess Sword, which would become the Master Sword, to aid her chosen hero, who would reveal himself when he drew the sword from its pedestal. 1,000 years later, Hylia is reborn on Skyloft as a young girl named Zelda, who is kidnapped by one of Demise's generals and goes back in time to Hylia's time to maintain the seal on Demise while her friend Link draws the goddess sword and becomes her chosen hero. Link gathers the Triforce and together they defeat Demise, sealing him away but not before Demise vows an incarnation of his hatred shall ever follow those who share the blood of the goddess and the spirit of the hero in a cycle without end. Zelda and Link take the inhabitants of Skyloft down to the surface and watch over the Triforce. Their descendants become known as Highlands, and the land becomes Hyrule. The cycle that Demise cursed Zelda Link and himself, now called Ganon, continues for three more games, with the trio fighting over the Triforce that eventually splits into three aspects, courage, wisdom, and power. Then the timeline splits with the Ocarina of Time. Time, that keeps coming up. Keep note of that. The timeline splits into three branches after Ocarina of Time. The Fallen Hero timeline is a branch in which Ganon defeats the Hero of Time, Link. The branch where Link defeats Ganon is itself split in two when Zelda sends Link back in time to his childhood. The Child timeline is a branch that follows Link back in his own time, while the Adult timeline is a branch where the Hero of Time has disappeared from the world. Inexplicably, the Master Sword exists in both branches. In the child timeline, Link returns it to the pedestal of time, and the adult timeline, Zelda does it. At some point, thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of years down the line, the timeline reunites. And 10,000 years before the events of Breath of the Wild, the Sheikah, along with Zelda and the Link of her time, create the Divine Beasts and the Guardians to seal away Calamity Ganon, the incarnation of Demise of their timeline. The Guardians and the Divine Beasts are sealed away for use by a future Link, and Zelda, and the total events of all the timelines fall into myths and legends. Which brings us to Breath of the Wild, where Zelda awakens her powers after Calamity Ganon returns, and Link almost dies. Link is enshrined in the Tomb of Resurrection, and Zelda uses her newly awakened powers to seal Ganon in the castle till Link wakes up 100 years later with no memories. Link recovers the memories that Zelda left behind in the Sheikah Slate, and with the help of the Divine Beast, weakens the Calamity enough for Zelda to seal Ganon once again. Tears of the Kingdom, the new game coming out, takes place very soon after the events of Breath of the Wild. Link and Zelda are helping the Hyrule rebuild itself after 100 years of Calamity, when they come across the beef jerky version of the Ganondorf. Not Ganon. One's a Gerudo King, and one is a Malicious Spirit. Ganondorf awakens, islands rise into the sky, and Zonai structures and constructs pop up all over Hyrule as Link loses his arm and Zelda falls into a dark pit with this strange golden sparkle on her. That, folks, is the timeline very briefly ex explained, so now it's time to get into the theories about Tears of the Kingdom. But first, if you've stuck around this long, consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. I'll be playing and most likely streaming Tears of the Kingdom when it comes out in a little over a month, so be sure to stick around for that. So, is Tears of the Kingdom the end of the Zelda timeline? Well, not to metagame for a moment, but I don't think Nintendo would go that route. Tears of the Kingdom is one of the few direct sequels in the Zelda game series, in part I'm sure because Breath of the Wild is one of the most successful Zelda games of all time. For them to cap the timeline here would limit them in a way that limits the possibility of future games. They'd either have to create a new alternate Zelda timeline, or focus on games that occur in between games that are already released, and frankly I don't see them doing that. But let's get into the lore theories. As I see it, there are three ways Tears of the Kingdom could end. 
Way 1, Link and Zelda win. They defeat Ganondorf, sealing Moe once again and purge the taint from Hyrule. Good triumphs over evil and they live happily ever after. In this scenario, the Zonai constructs go dormant and the floating islands are slowly let back down to Hyrule, and the reconstruction that occurred after Breath of the Wild continues. The Kingdom of Hyrule is restored, and the next game in the timeline takes place 1,000 years in a better and beautiful Hyrule. Way 2. Ganondorf wins. Link and or Zelda are sealed or killed by the reincarnation of, Dem of Demise, likely not before hiding the Triforce away somewhere in Hyrule. The islands plummet to Earth with catastrophic consequences, and Hyrule is utterly destroyed. The races are exterminated or enslaved by Ganondorf and his corrupt monsters, and the next game takes place with Ganon hunting the reincarnations of the Triforce wielders. This would certainly be a bold choice, having Link and Zelda lose, but I do think it is the least likely option. Notice, however, that both of those options continue the timeline. Which brings us to Way 3. My personal favorite, but also potentially the most far-fetched. This theory involves the time travel that we referenced multiple times in the timeline, and is supported by the little we've seen in the trailers. After all, the Zonai are supposed to be an ancient race long extinct, Ganondorf is an ancient Gerudo king who has returned, and the logo for the Tears of the Kingdom is an Ouroboros. A symbol comprised of a snake eating its own tail. A symbol that stands for wholeness, infinity, or a cycle with no beginning or end. Here's what happens in this scenario. When Ganondorf rehydrates like one of those little dinosaur pills at the start of the game, and Zelda falls, Link fails to catch her. Either as she falls, or after she reaches the bottom of whatever pit they're in, Zelda is sent back in time, possibly this gold glow here that we see. She is sent back potentially as far as the time before Skyloft. As Zelda is back in time, she meets with the Zonai, and potentially, if my suspicions are correct, Hylia herself. With their help, Zelda, whose current incarnation is historically a giant tech nerd, creates the Zonai constructs and a way to raise those islands into the sky. She will leave behind tools, clues, and instructions to help Link fight Ganondorf. With these aids, Link will defeat Ganondorf, but Hyrule is irreparable, so he goes back in time as well, possibly with the titular Tears of the Kingdom, and reunites with Zelda. Together with Hylia, they seal Demise and send Skyloft into the heavens, bringing the series to a poetic end. It becomes the Ouroboros, the snake eating its own tail. I think this would be a fitting end to the timeline, and would allow Nintendo to play with the space between games and more diverging timelines, while also bookending the timeline to having a satisfying conclusion. Of course, I could be wrong. This is, after all, just a theory. A game the no wait, hold on, sorry, that's a that's a different channel. Time travel might not be involved at all. Perhaps Zelda falls into the pit, activates a long dormant safety mechanism, and reawakens the Zonai and sends the islands in the sky that way. But I'm sure we're gonna all find out in a couple weeks whether I'm correct or not. Folks, I'm gonna be playing Tears of the Kingdom when it comes out, so be sure to subscribe if you're interested in that. If you've enjoyed this video, I'm sure you'll like the I'm sure you'll like this one here. I've been Speaker 4, and I will catch you on the flip side later. And hey, be sure to let me know your theories about Tears of the Kingdom in the comments. Alright? Okay? Bye!